So I just want to show you how I, um, I'm trying to get water in and out of the block. So, you know, here is where the original water pump goes. And it's now turned into just a, a flange for the electric pump that sits below. And I'll show you that in a sec. And then the primary outlet at the front of the head, I've now built this um, flange. And I'll take it out in a sec and show you the, the back side of it. But this, this flange back here was a really tough part to machine, let me tell you. But uh, now it lets me get an AN16 full one inch diameter outlet, which is exactly the same size as the one that was in there, uh, the plastic one. And this one clears my uh, throttle bodies. The, the big problem is there's a linkage that uh, comes down to open the valves up. And oh, by the way, there's my nitrous injectors inside. You can see how they line up perfectly, these tiny ones from the Nitrous Wizards guys. And these are my, um, my vacuum ports. Um, so all this stuff has to fit in, these, and uh, this needs to point down at a hard 45 degree angle. And then I've got um, another 45 hose end that'll connect in and send the uh, water out to the top of the radiator. And on this side here, there's three connections that I've tapped in. The back one is just uh, the rubber hose that goes to the heater and the car, the heater core. This goes to the top of the um, coolant recovery tank, uh, the overflow tank. So this is any air, any bubbles in the top of the uh, cooling system will come out here. And the bottom of the recovery tank, which is an aluminum fabricated tank, the bottom of the tank connects to the bottom of the radiator core. And then this is the secondary outlet that, so this plus this both end up tying in. I have a custom radiator, so I have all these fittings on both the inlet side and the outlet side of the the, ra the radiator core, including um, temperature sensor ports and stuff like that, I'll actually put right into the spec for the radiator when it gets fabricated. So it makes it nice and clean. And there's my new uh, Mocal uh, British um, uh, oil cooler. Um, it's a high temperature one, so 200 degree Fahrenheit. A lot of guys run the 180 thermostats, that's stat stock, but it's actually a little bit cold for an engine. Engines like to be a little warmer, at least the oil does, and uh, you want the oil to get hot enough to evaporate any um, water, any moisture that gets in the crankcase and the oil system. So this allows it to get up to 200 before it goes to the external cooler. And that external cooler is actually going to be integrated into my custom radiator. So my radiator will be really two, two functions. It will be both for the coolant as well as for the oil. So anyway. There you go, I'll, in a sec I'll shoot a bit more video and flip that uh, connector on backwards so you can see the rest of the machining. So this is the definition of a frustratingly difficult part to machine, um, at least for a novice like me. So there's the back end and uh, you have to cut threads into this thing and the problem is the threads can only go that deep. And, you know, a normal tap or tap and die set, normal tap is two inches long. So I had to thread it in three quarters of an inch deep, cut a thread off, thread it in, cut a thread off, thread it in, cut a thread off, and basically sacrifice the tool to, to, to get this done. I haven't tightened this all the way up, but it's got to get screwed in with, with thread sealant. And then I'm going to actually epoxy, uh, aluminum epoxy, this lower lip. Uh, here and fill fill this gap in on the inside so that I've this gap this open gap here is going to be smoothed across and then I'll remachine across the surface a little bit just to make sure it's absolutely dead level but I want a bit more um, sealant I'm just going to use a liquid gasket on the surface to per, to, to seal the block and uh, and this part um, so I'll screw this thread this um, flange um, in nice and tight and seal it all up and then that becomes my uh, my solution to to a very nasty problem with these ITBs, these independent individual throttle body setups. So, so there you go. So I've been attempting to run brake lines, and uh, I had them all done, in fact. And then I started to flare them with my manual flaring tool, and I started gimping up, messing up the ends, because I'm using one of those. Uh, you know, lower end flaring tools, which I've now decided is a bad idea. So I've bought a Master Cool Professional Hydraulic 
uh, pressed to the ends and um, which gives you OEM quality bubble flares and I, I need to do SAE uh, double flares on the Willwood because it's an American uh, standard and um, so I'm gonna have to rebend some of the lines. Uh, the, the line that um, went here I had tucked in beautifully but um, it's um, it's too short. The, these uh, ends here the, the, the master cool unit actually needs a longer straight piece to work with just the way the tool works so I'm gonna I may have to end up I think this one's going to be fine here. This one I may end up having to relay out again. A little hard to do. I had a nice curved bottom to it, but um, I need uh, probably two inches straight uh, between the fitting. So these loops here will have to be a little bit longer coming around the corner than, than I'd like. Um, this one, I'm not finished quite bending it, but it's tucked in along the chassis and around the corner and up. And, I will straighten it. It's wobbly now because I haven't dressed it and made it straight. And I'm going to wrap all these in plastic. And then there's my T running to the to the bottom there, and then that goes to the end there. So I'll uh, I'll, I'll work on that next week when that tool arrives. Um, so the guys at Tectonic said you want your exhaust system to fit. You're going to have to cut away the um, the hangers as, as I told you. So I've cut that one off and this one and this one and this one I thought I might use them to create a new hanger spot but uh, screw it they were they were wimpy and they didn't look very good and uh, Josh says that the uh, race header itself will hold up the whole front of the exhaust and so I'm going to put a stainless steel brace between the collector of the header and the block of the engine triangulating the header so it's really rigid and strong then there's a flex pipe and then my new vibrant this is actually a really nice little unit, little nine and a half inch long um, resonator, and uh, that'll that'll tuck in right behind the flex coupling. So the header uh, collector is there, and then the, then the flex coupling, and then this goes here just before the bend up. Then I'll keep the second tectonics resonator there, so I'll have two resonators in a row, and then the Borla exhaust. And I've already cut off the flange and dressed and cleaned up the rear tailpipe. And um, anyway, so I'm working on all this too. And so this was all repainted today, re 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 uh, mud and primed and base coated and clear coated the whole tunnel. So um, it's all pretty again. And um, one more thing, yeah. So a couple things. One, I just um, I've got uh, four coats. I went kind of overboard four coats of, of epoxy on the uh, uh, the shifter hosing after it was all de-rusted and degreased and everything. And then uh, the Borgson U-joint. Um, I checked the part numbers, even though I ordered stainless. It looks like it was a uh, regular steel that they shipped me, so I, I've cleaned that, sanded it, and epoxied it so that it uh, won't, won't rust on me. And then if I whip around the corner here, just up, oh, and this is the, uh, I'm gonna put this on the um, firewall and it's an adhesive backed um, reflective uh, thermal barrier. Same thing, I'm going to run it on the tunnel and then some of it where the, the muffler is and, and maybe some of it on the uh, on the gas can tank as well. And then, da -dum -da -dum -da -dum, around the corner here, um, and I got some nice um, titanium header wrap. Where is it? Um, so this is this um, uh, I, you know, this is titanium exhaust wrap and I, I may wrap that around the exhaust pipe where it goes by the uh, the gas can so and this is the other resonator I was trying to use and it's just it's the hush power it's just too too bulky and I'll be able to swap in and out the um, the catalytic converter with the design so here ha, 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 ha. so I got my brackets that um, the Autotech sway bar was not um, uh, uh, well, didn't come with the brackets it was supposed to, but they can't get stock on them anymore. And this is a, a, a um, VW Classic parts. Again, they couldn't even get it to me, but I found them in Greece and got a guy from Greece on eBay to, to ship them to me. So now I'm I'm good on on the sway bar. Um, this these units I got the bearings all packed and sleeves and everything put in and got it all adjusted and 
it's not uh, rotating where it should. I've got this thing too tight and I've got too much um, I put a stainless steel sleeve in here um, and so the Delrin bushing isn't rotating where it should. It shouldn't, I don't know if you can see, but basically the, the bolt is staying still where it should, but the um, this should have a little bit more slack in it so that the the um, most of the movement is actually in the is in the is in the uh, the bushing, um, not not on the outside of the washer. So I talked to the Lila Auto Sport guys that supply those, and uh, basically they say that um, I've just I got it too tight, so I got to loosen them up a little bit, just let them have a little bit of play, and then they'll uh, they'll work properly. So so that's.